Hi everybody, Peter King with the MMQB here and this is One on One with Peter King presented by the new Windows. I had a chance when I was out in Denver for the AFC Championship game to talk to Broncos football czar John Elway, who obviously was responsible for putting a lot of this team together, including snaring Peyton Manning to play quarterback. So here's my conversation with John Elway. John, I want to ask you a little bit about the Super Bowl first. You played and won your first Super Bowl game at age 37, when a lot of people in Denver had sort of given up hope that the Broncos could win a Super Bowl. When you won at such an advanced age, did you find it, did you find you had more appreciation for the two times you won it based on how hard you would work to get there? Well, I think probably in the fact, because I knew, you know, I was getting close to the end of my career. So I think that obviously having worked, you know, getting the first one in my 15th year, knowing that, you know, the end of my career was near, I probably did appreciate it. Plus, I hadn't won one up to that point, so it made it, made it feel that much better to finally get over the hump. We'd lost three up to that point to give, get over the hump and finally win one. So uh, both those were very, very special. And to be able to do it late in my career, I would like to have had about three more earlier in my career, but it uh, <laughs> didn't work out that way. But it was nice to be able to finish that way. And, and uh, I still do appreciate them. Those are things that, uh, you know, it made all the work in high school, college, everywhere, it made it all worth it. When everybody talks about Peyton Manning now, they look at his overall playoff record, and they also look at other players' playoff records, you know, Tom Brady, Joe Montana. What I found interesting about your career in the first three Super Bowls you played in, your defense allowed 45 and a half points per game in those three games. So talk a little bit about how this being the ultimate team sport how a lot of times it's unfair to put it, whether it be a quarterback, whether it be whoever, whether it be a coach, to put all of it on one or two people. Well, and that, you hit it on the nose. It is the ultimate team sport. So you have, to be a, you have to be a really good football team, a great football team to be world champions and to be able to come out on top in this league because there are so many good teams year in and year out. So, you know, fair or unfair, that's what goes along with the quarterback position. And I think what they try, you know, what everybody tries to do is when you really talk, start talking about quarterbacks, it really goes to the Super Bowls. But the common denominator among comparing all the quarterbacks is number one wins and number two Super Bowl wins. And so, um, you know, that's, that's what comes with the territory, that comes with the position. Even though you're not controlling the defensive side, you're not controlling who's on your team. You're not, you're not in control of any of that. Uh, but you still, because you touch the ball and that position is so important, that uh, that's probably why it goes, uh, you know, with the territory. So you get out of football and you're out of the game for a while. What made you want to come back? And did part of you say, man, I, I don't want the 14-hour days. I, and, and I don't want sort of the fate of a franchise on my shoulders. Well, I think, number one, when I retired, I kind of got away from the game and for a couple of years and see if there was something else out there because being a coach's son, you know, there was a, during the falls, for as far as I can remember, were, were football games. And so I wanted to kind of get away from the game and, and uh, see if there was something else out there. And then once I got out there, I realized I was built for football. And I missed the scoreboards on, on Sunday, you know, Sunday afternoons. I like, I like having a score and figuring out whether you're successful week in or week out. And, and so to me, having been that way my whole life, I missed it when I wasn't in it. So uh, coming back in, I knew it was going to be a different position than I was as a quarterback. And uh, it was going to be, it's always a lot of work. This game's a lot of work, whether you're in the front office or playing on the field, it's a lot of work and you got to commit that time. And especially to win. And uh, so I knew you what say, I was. You say you like the score and you sort of miss the score, but to really get your hands dirty in this, you got to care who the seventh player on your practice squad is. You got to care who the 53rd player on your roster is. What has that been like for you to go down and to try to decide between the, you know, the practice squad linebacker from Alabama or Texas A&M? You know, that's, that's the fun part is finding the right pieces to the puzzle. And I, and I enjoy that part. Obviously, when you're a player, you're, more, you're all about scheme, especially as a quarterback. You're looking at matchups, but you really spend a lot of time on scheme. Whereas in, you get on the personnel side, now you're just concentrating on personnel. And so I've really enjoyed that. We've got a tremendous staff here. I enjoy working with our staff here. And like you said, we've got to be good through the 61st guy, the eight guys on the practice squad are 53 guys. And then also thinking big picture and thinking about the long term of this franchise and making sure we're in position to be successful year in and year out. So that's all the challenge. And it's all about finding the right people because it's a people business and finding the right players that can play on the field, but also coaches that can coach and 
personnel people that can evaluate. And so I enjoy that challenge. It's the gut feeling. If his health cooperates, how many more years do you think Peyton Manning plays football? You know, I think he takes it year by year. I think that he's at that age. I know when I got late in my career, it really came down to the physical side of it because mentally you never think you ever, you know, even at 53, I think I could still play the game, but the body doesn't listen. And so it really comes down, um, for me, it came down to the physical side. And then we really said, okay, I'm, this is going to be my last year before the year. Um, so uh, I think he revisit that at the end of next year, I, or each year. And I think Peyton will look at it after each year. You know, he's a guy that is a junkie and he loves football. And, and uh, you know, you want to get as much out of it as you can because you can never replace it once you're done. And so uh, I'm sure Peyton and I will have that conversation. And I will, you know, and he's had that, I'm sure, with his dad also. But, um, you know, I think he'll take it a year at a time and evaluate at the end of each year. John Elway, thanks a lot for talking about your life and the future of football. Thanks. You bet. Our thanks to John Elway and our thanks to you for watching One on One with Peter King, presented by the New Windows.